Hi, my name is Ryan Languish, and this is Luda Lodge, a channel about sparking growth in your journey as a game designer. And today I'm going to be looking at what is actually kind of the intersection of two different series that I've had. One is how to use Nandeck, um, which is a program for generating layouts and cards from spreadsheet data. And then I've also had a series on how to prototype, prototype in Tabletop Simulator, which is kind of a virtual tabletop sandbox that's very useful for prototyping your games or in play testing within the virtual environment. And so in this video, we're really looking at if you wanted a workflow where you're creating cards and components in Nandeck and you want to be able to then import them into Tabletop Simulator, um, and then play them in there and how to, how to make that a streamlined process. Um, and fortunately, Nandeck is going to make this very easy um, to accomplish. So if, you, if this is the first video that you're seeing from either of these series, you could check either of those playlists out, either more on the Nandeck side or more on the Tabletop Simulator side. Um, if you've seen the Nandeck videos, what you're seeing here should look somewhat familiar, as this is working from the same example that I went over in the introductory video. And then it also includes the um, Google Sheets link. So this is basically linking directly to Google Sheets instead of using the local file, um, which I talked about in the last video. Um, and now I want to, when I generate this, generate it in a format that I'm going to be able to import into Tabletop Simulator. And this Tabletop Simulator, when it's expecting cards, it basically wants an image that has the cards in a grid so that, that it can you know slice that into all the cards that it's going to put into the game. And Nandek has a directive that makes this very simple, and it's called display. Um, and display takes a few different things here. The first is the name of an image file. So I'm just going to name this like TTS Tabletop Simulator Cards.png. Um, so that's a file that I'm, I want to export um, so that I can get it to Tabletop Simulator. And actually, in our case, the rest of this isn't going to matter because by default, what display is going to do, if I don't provide it anything else, it's going to assume I'm going to do it on the whole range of cards, which in this case is what I want. I want all my cards exported. And it's just going to find the um, prime or, or the factors of, the, of that. So in this case, I have, I think, 15 cards or I have 12 cards. Um, so it's going to say, okay, 3 times 4 equals 12. So it's automatically going to put 4 to a row. It's going to use whatever the larger factor is for the amount in a row. And that's just the default, which is perfect. Historically, if you were doing this, I think, a year ago, um, Tabletop Simulator used to be a lot more picky about um, how you gave the deck format. It used to need to be 70 cards. It was uh, 70 cards, and the last card had to be a blank card. However, that is no longer the case. Now Tabletop Simulator, when you're importing it, lets you slice it however you want. It lets you pick what are the number of rows, what are the number of columns. So we no longer need to worry about exporting this very specific um, template, which is nice. So this ends up actually being all we need. So if we validate our deck here, which currently is actually pulling straight from um, my Google Sheets, so it's actually doing it over the internet, which is partly why it's taking a little bit longer here. Um, to do. It says the deck's valid. I can build it. Um, and when I built this here, what display is actually doing is it is generating that file, that image, um, with all of those cards in it. And so I'm going to jump over now into my file explorer to take a look at what that image looks like. So here's the image opened up that I it exported. I can hover here. We see TTS cards PNG. And this is exactly what we want. It's just the cards arranged in a grid and it automatically calculated that four by three was kind of the most efficient, the closest to square way to do the number of cards I had, which happened to be 12. So now that I have this, I want to jump into Tabletop Simulator so that I can import it. All right, so we're here in Tabletop Simulator and I'm going to want to import a custom deck, which I can do by going to Cards here, or Custom as the same option, um, and drag out a custom, oops, custom deck. And that's going to give me some options here. Um, and so Face here is where I'm going to be importing that image that we just got from Nandeck. Um, so I'm going to select that and put it here. We're just going to store it locally for now. Um, we're not going to have unique backs per card. I don't really have a back of a card, so I'm just going to use um, shield as my shield image as my back of my card. Um, but width and height here is where we need to match the dimensions of that grid. So in our particular case, we had, and it does look like there is a limit to this, like 10 by 7, which used to be the default. 
is the biggest you can go. So it's worth knowing when you're Nandek, like if you have more than 70 cards, you're going to have to break that into groups. You can't just export it all um, together. Um, but here we just had four by three. Um, and then the number of total cards, if we can do math here, is 12. But it's possible if I had like some empty slots, like maybe I only had 10 cards, um, which Dandek probably would have arranged differently. But if you had holes in that grid, you could make sure your number accounts for that. Um, we don't care about these options, so I'm just going to import. And so this is going to load this in here. Um, and actually, my <laughs> this is kind of funny. My backs of cards, that shield image, is transparent which is making my cards transparent, <laughs> as you can see, which is kind of a goofy thing, because it's gonna be transparent, but only when it's face down. When I flip it, it's gonna um, have the normal thing. So obviously, you would want a real back for these cards, um, but that's what I had available at the moment. Um, but we have all our cards here. Um, I can flip these or flip the whole deck. Um, and these are all the cards that we made in Nandex. So you can see how this workflow could be pretty quick once you get used to it. If I have Nandek linked to Google Sheets, that means I can change data in the spreadsheet. Without downloading it again, I can just regenerate it in Nandek, and then I can come in Tabletop Simulator and just pull in the file that Nandek exported with display. And that, so I could make updates to you know values on cards, costs, any, anything that I've learned in my playtesting, and have that all the way through and in Tabletop Simulator within minutes, honestly, once you have this, this workflow kind of down, um, which is nice. Um, so I'm gonna hop back into Nandek real quick for some closing thoughts. Okay, so I mentioned that if you have more than 70 cards, you're gonna have to break it into groups. Um, so if you were doing that, basically what you could do is use the next two parameters here, which is first card and last card, to say like I wanna do cards one through 10, or you know, you'd do one through 70 probably, um, and then do it ag another export with 71 through whatever your value is, um, and play with those to just get multiple images that you can then import into Tabletop Simulator one at a time. Um, but yeah, usually what I'll do if I have a project that I'm doing this with is I'll just kind of have a comment here that says, um, you know, uncomment if exporting to Tabletop Simulator. And I'll keep this commented out. So if I'm making changes to the card in Nandek, I don't want to generate that image every, every time. If it's a lot of cards, it actually takes a little bit of time for it to generate. So I leave it commented out, but then when I want to actually export it um, to Tabletop Simulator, I just take out this comment, run it, and I get that image, and I have it to use. Um, and that's it. Hopefully this was helpful. Um, if you've worked with either Nandek or Tabletop Simulator or haven't, um, hopefully you can see kind of how that could be a nice workflow to, to be making edits to your cards, making edits to the data in the spreadsheet, and having that quickly available um, to test in Tabletop Simulator. Um, if you found it helpful, consider giving the video a like, subscribing to the channel. Um, let me know what else you'd maybe like to see from either the, the Nandek or Tabletop Simulator side, and I will see you in the next video.